are back in Nearpod for part two. I'm going to be showing you how to uh, edit and assign lessons to your students and then how to view results of your students work. So I have selected a lesson from the library um, like I did in the first video. I went to the Nearpod lesson library. I looked through the English language arts lessons for high school and I chose this grammar lesson called parallel structure and I'm going to be um, choosing this one. Now before I decide how I'm going to deliver it to students I'm going to explore a few of the options here. So I could go to preview which is the same thing that I looked at when I was trying to decide what lesson to choose and I showed that preview in yesterday's video. The other options I have here are to share it, duplicate it, add it to school library or a folder so you can organize these into folders. I can also export it as a PDF, which is sometimes helpful. Um, if you want to keep track of these on your Google Drive, you could save it as PDF. It really turns into like a series of Google Slides. Um, reports, which will show you how students did, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then you can also delete it from your uh, library here on Nearpod if you've decided you don't want to use it any longer. So I'm going to click on Edit and show you some of the options. Now it will always give you this warning. So you can edit the original or you can duplicate the lesson. It's become yours since you downloaded it, so you're not messing up the original if you edit it. But they're suggesting that you make a copy. That way, in case you delete something you don't want to delete, then you have the original to go back to. You could always just go back to the library and download it again, um, but they're suggesting you do that. I'm just going to click on Edit Lesson. I don't want two copies of this, and I'm not going to make very many significant changes to this. So now we're in an edit screen. So I can see all of the slides that I have in here. Um, all of these that have these little watermarks over them, those are ones that have what they call a Nearpod feature in them. So this one requires students to draw. That's another draw one. This one's a little slideshow, a quiz, another slideshow, another quiz, open-ended questions. This one has students going to an outside website, doing a poll, again, another website. So all of these are opportunities for students to interact and show their understanding. For these downloaded lessons, um, slides like these or these are all going to be graphics, so they probably won't be editable. So I'm going to click on this one and open it. I had to double click on it to get into the slide. And now you'll notice that this crosshatch stays here everywhere I go in here. So it's not going to let me make any changes to this. I also can't really meaningfully add anything to these because these are, as I said, they're all images so it's not going to let me add anything to the slide. So the only thing that's really good for a downloaded lesson is to delete slides that I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and exit. I'm going to go ahead and hit save even though I didn't really make any changes and then I'm going to um, select a slide that I'm going to delete. So this slide I don't know that I really need for students to do because this is about me as the teacher so I'm just going to go ahead and hit delete. Okay so now that's not in there any longer so I really can't change very much about this lesson. Now if I started it on my own or I wanted to add to it um, I could always add a new slide if I wanted to. So with these pre-downloaded lessons, pre-created lessons, most of them are graphics heavy like these are where you cannot edit the slides. The only way I know of to edit them would be to take a screenshot of the slide, to pull it out into another program, add text on top of it, take another screenshot or save it as an image, and then drop it back in here as a slide to replace the original one. If that sounds way too complicated for you, don't even bother and just uh, add another slide with the text that you need to include. So since we can't edit slides, the only two options we have are to delete slides and add more. So I'm going to show you how to add a new slide. So um, I'm going to add a slide here in the middle. See all these different options I have of things that I want to add. So let's say I wanted to add a video first for students on parallel structure. Okay, so I went to YouTube and I found a little video on parallel structure. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to Nearpod. I'm going to paste it. 
hit the search button, there it is, and I'm going to hit save. So now, right there in between these two is my video. Okay, so now I'm going to hit save and exit. And now I am ready to assign it to my students. So there's two options. There's live lesson and there's student paced. So a live lesson is when you're actually physically in the classroom with them and you want every student's computer to be on the same page at the same time. Um, which is really handy. It's kind of cool when you change the slide, their page changes so you can keep them on the same pace as everyone else. Um, but when you're distance learning, that doesn't work as well. So you need to do a student pace lesson. So because we're, our schools are closed right now, I'm going to go ahead and show you that version. If at some point in the future we do go back to campus and we still have access to this, then I'll give you a tutorial for the live lesson. So I'm going to click on the student paste. And you'll see that there is a link that's posted here. So you could email it, share it through social media, you could send students a link, you could embed it in a website. I would use Google Classroom because I have a Google Classroom. So this will just post it to Google Classroom and the students can join. You can do a remind.com lesson and most of us on our site don't use Microsoft Teams, but if you were at a school that did use that, then you could connect with it that way. You'll also notice that there is a time limit on it and an expiration date. So students have that much amount of time to complete the assignment. That's how long the code is good for. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this to my clipboard because I'm going to need it in just a second. You wouldn't need to do that for your own um, students. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like on the student side. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to log out. Okay, and I'm going to go to the students instead of logging in. I'm going to go to students and I'm just going to enter that code that I just put in here. This is the code for my lesson. Now I'm looking at it as if I were a student. So now I have to type in my name. And I'm going to go ahead and put a class period. And I'm going to hit join session. So now I'm seeing this as if I were a kid. So I'm going to go through and do this assignment. So I fast forwarded this part of the video so that you didn't have to watch me in real time complete the lesson. But I wanted you to be able to see all the different features that were in here. So I will meet you after I'm done going through the lesson. Okay, so now that I've completed this, I'm going to log back in as a teacher. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to reports. And I'm going to click on this one. So when I click on this little envelope, it shows me my student results. I can only see student participation and I can only see correct answers of self-graded responses. So any of those drawing or um, typed responses, I won't be able to see a result for. So the other part that's going to be important to me as a teacher is these categories up here. So not all of them were used in this lesson. There was a little quiz. So now I can see how my student responded to each of these questions. I can click on the poll and see how all my students felt. So some of these questions, like the open-ended ones, aren't scored for you and they're not scorable. So I can click on each question and see all my student responses. There's only one here, but I would have all of my student responses listed here um, when all of my students had participated, but I can't score these. There's also no way to upload these to ARIES or uh, import grades or any of that kind of thing. You'd have to keep track of your grades in a separate document or a separate sheet of paper and then put those in a grade book if you wanted to grade this assignment. We had one additional type of question and that was the draw it one. So if I click here I can see what the student actually drew, what they circled. 
um, and make note of whether or not it was right or wrong. Again, on a separate document because this won't let me grade it. We have other question types that we didn't use in this presentation, so it shows no data. So those are the basics for editing, assigning, and reviewing student results in Nearpod. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.